The Brooklyn Vegan Show is a podcast about music brought to you by the music blog and online record store Brooklyn Vegan. Make sure to subscribe to hear all of our upcoming episodes featuring interviews with musicians and more, and find us 24-7 at brooklynvegan.com, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Hey, welcome to the new episode of the Brooklyn Vegan Show. I'm BV editor Andrew Sacker, and today's episode is an interview with the New York rapper Wiki. We're stoked to have Wiki on the show to talk about his not one, but two new records he put out this year, 14K Figaro, which was produced entirely by Tony Seltzer, and Faith is a Rock, a collaboration with Mike, produced entirely by The Alchemist. Wiki's been on a roll lately with doing projects with a single producer. Last year, he put out Cold Cuts with Subject, and the year prior, he did Half God with Navy Blue and Telephone Booth with Na. In our interview, Wiki talks about what he likes about doing a whole project with a single producer, what all these different producers have brought to the table, and he gives us a little bit of insight into where he's at now and where he might go in the future. We also go back in time a little bit. Wiki tells us about how he got into rapping and how he started making music, who some of his early influences were, and he talks about some underrated New York rap records, records that were a really big deal for him growing up that he says don't always get the flowers they deserve. He also gives us a list of his current favorite rappers, many of whom he's worked with in the past. It was a really fun chat, but before we get there, just a heads up that listeners of this podcast can get 30% off your first year's membership at DistroKid by signing up at distrokid.com slash VIP slash Brooklyn Vegan. If you're unfamiliar, DistroKid is a service for musicians that allows you to easily upload your music to all major streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, and more. It allows you to do automatic revenue splits so collaborators and co-writers can get paid too. It provides you with an artist page that links to your music on all streaming services. It allows you to add lyrics, credits, liner notes, and more. Again, you can get 30% off by signing up now at distrokid.com slash VIP slash Brooklyn Vegan. We've also included the link in the description of this episode and you can click directly from there. And now, here's my chat with Wiki. So you've got two new records out in the world, 14K Figaro with Tony Seltzer and Faith is a Rock with Mike and the Alchemist. How have you been feeling about getting these two records out there? What's the reaction been like? It's been good. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of it, the music I've been sitting on for a while, so I feel good to get it out. You know what I mean? Finally, especially 14K, like we definitely been sitting. Like, we made that a while ago, but we were just trying to make sure the vinyl was all good and everything. So I'm excited to get that out there and just have people hear it. But, I mean, I think, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, having the projects so close together, it might have, like, you know, it's like sometimes that could be a lot. But I'm just happy to get it all out there, you know what I mean, and then move forward on the next. So I feel like it's like a, it's kind of like could go either way you know like it's sometimes you're like oh man they're releasing so much at once but like i know for me i heard faith is a rock and it was like 14k was announced so quickly after and i'm like awesome like more right away like it was like yeah yeah, yeah. no for sure no definitely i mean i think the last like five projects i've done have all been with one producer i mean tony the tony project we worked with a lot of producers but it's still he was the one kind of like producing the whole thing so and then obviously Faith is a Rock, me and Mike, two MCs, but it's still Alchemist. And then before that, it was Cold Cuts with Subject. And then it was uh, Half Guy with Navy Blue, Telephone Booth with Nas. So like I'm, I'm, do- I'm hyped to get that kind of like series of like all these different, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, I was kind of the past couple of years just being like, let me just lock in and work with different people and kind of use that to like figure out where I want to go next. You know what I mean? And now I'm in a place where I'm excited to just experiment and figure out what I want to do next and not really be, not get too ahead of it. You know what I mean? Take my time with it. And I'm happy that I like got all this done the past year. You know what I mean? I've just been productive. So now I can kind of sit back and be like, let me get recreated, be a student of the game again. And like, you know what I mean? Like once you, have a routine and once you have like a formula it kind of you need to break that formula and you know what I mean to like stay fresh and and keep the momentum creatively I think you know what I mean because you don't want to get locked in because then that's just like 
You know what I mean? It just gets boring or some shit. Boring, like I think it could get boring the the art itself, but also for me, you know what I mean. As the artist creating, it's like it's like that kind of you lose some of that magic when you're like almost like when you feel like you mastered something, you need to like break that down and be like, no, nah, I need to be a student again and like come come with a beginner's mindset, you know. Yeah, definitely. And it, it does feel like not only have you done all these projects with different producers, but it's like each one is so different. Like like Cold Cut sounds nothing like Faith is a Rock, you know, which sounds nothing like Telephone Booth. It's like, yeah. it seems like you kind of get in a different zone for each one. So exactly. Now now I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where to blend those those lines without making it, you know, forced and like, you know what I mean? Just like that's what I'm saying. Like I could tell you, but I don't even know myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm in those like beginning stages. So, but yeah, nah, it's, it's been like, especially faith is a rock was dope to work with Mike on. I mean, an Al obviously, but just as an MC to be able to go back and forth with him, it was really like for both of us. I think it, it like made us grow as artists and like, just we influenced each other and were inspired by each other and like, just, the momentum we were like building off each other when we were writing. So that felt dope. And it was like a challenge, you know what I mean? Because it's not just like, Oh, I could, you know what I mean? It's just a challenge in a good way. Like that, like I said before, like, I think that's what makes it fun and exciting. And that's why you want to do it to make, you know, you want it to be, you don't want it to be easy. So that was dope, you know? And I, and I was actually really, because it was so like we were working on that over the year and it's not your like it, for none of us three it was our it was like that's my project you know it was us three working on it we have all these other things going on so for in a way that made it also kind of freeing i think cuz none of us were like overthinking anything or like you know what i mean it just made it really free it was like a very like free experience making that and then it came out and i, I at first i was like did I go hard enough on that shit? I'm like thinking as an MC, I'm like, did I bar up enough on that? But then I like listened to the whole thing. And once Al did the full mix on it and added all the effects and like skits and everything and like really made it a project, I was like, oh, this shit's crazy. I was hype on it. So I'm excited to get that out and just, I was excited to get that out. And then like the 14K figure, I've been sitting on that for like a year. So I'm like hype as hell to get that out. The one with Mike is cool because, like, you guys are such different types of rappers. So kind of hearing you go back and forth and, like, kind of challenge and inspire each other, it's like you, you kind of brought stuff out of each other that isn't always there, I think. Mm-hmm. No, I feel that. Definitely. You guys did those three songs together last year. Was the plan always to do an album, or did you do the three songs and you were like, this clicked so much, we should do more? Low-key, I think it wasn't like a... It like it wasn't as if it was like we needed to do the album for the you know what I mean like basically it was like an opportunity arose and then it was like oh wait let's do a whole fucking album with this but that was kind of the plan from the beginning because we were like this opportunity's dope but at the same time we want to make it something even bigger and and or just something even more like you know just like a full project not just like an ad campaign not that you know what I mean like that wasn't dope too and patter that's my people so that was ill to be able to work with them and they gave us a dope opportunity just to bring us all together but from there we were like all right now nah, we got to do the full thing because then it just you know what i mean like it doesn't feel right we have to like really take our time and do this so really it was those first three songs and then we we met up in amsterdam all three of us with the Patter dudes, and then um, I remember Al was playing more beats, and then he played that uh, the Mayor's a Cop beat, and we were like, "This shit crazy!" Just hearing the beat. So then that, especially that, that even hearing that, and then me and Mike making that song, that was like, "All right, now we gotta we gotta finish this," because now we have this song. We were like, at first we were like, "Oh, one more, that's the one," but then we were like, "Nah, this shit the one." So like, but no one knew about that one, but that came like pretty soon after we made those three, you know? So that was really what pushed us to be like, yo, we got to do, we got to do this. You know what I mean? And then we, me and Mike would just meet up when we had time and we would just write and record. We, I did a lot of it at Mike's 
crib. We did some of it at my boy Ben's studio, so it was cool. And then we had a couple sessions where we got to get in with Al and like make songs there too. So it was a good mix of everything, you know. I think. So tell me a little more about the three of you coming together. Like, uh, how, like what was the sort of initial catalyst for that project? What do you like working? What do you like about working with those two guys? Yeah, for sure. Like, for me, uh, I've always wanted to work with Al, and I've known Al for a while, but I just be in New York all the time, so it's like I don't always get a chance. And like, I've been at the stool, and we, I did, a, I did some of the half god joints over there. Uh, we recorded all I need over there, so like, you know, I was familiar with the whole, that whole world, and you know what I mean, his whole kind of like team and fam, and I have like. Already, I've been, you know, me and Earl go back, me and Sage go back. So it's like, that's already there. And me and Mike go back too. Like, me and Mike and Earl all met at the same time. You know what I mean? So, so uh, it all kind of like, it, it's crazy how it happened because I've always wanted to work with Al. For me, from my perspective, I've been wanting to work with Al. And at the time, I really wanted to reconnect with Mike. Not that we weren't homies and shit, just on um music. You know what I mean? Like, because we, we made records back in the day together early so I was like yo we gotta I want to reconnect with Mike on some New York like just what we're both doing here you know what I mean and and Mike's bigger than New York you know what I mean but just he's he's based here and everything so I'm like yo we gotta do this and I just was I was you know I was into his I was inspired by what he was doing you know what I mean and so I was like I, I've been wanting to work with him so once that opportunity came I was like oh that's hard I'm we gotta do this and it's with Al you know what I mean so it, it really all like came together even though it was put together, it felt really organic to me. Like, it felt like it was meant to be, you know? And I'm hyped to keep working with Mike. I want to get on more Mike production as well and uh, continue working with Al, too. So I got another joint with Al that I did that, like, when we first, like, when we first had this thing, it was, we needed one. So I didn't even know. I was just, yo, I got the out pack. I'm like, I'm recording, motherfucker. I got the out pack. It's over. So I just started recording, but it was supposed to be one track with Mike, one track with me, and then one track with us together. You feel me? So I recorded one track on my own, and the pad of people were like, yo, we want like you on drum. Like, you know what I mean? It was like a loop. They were like, we want you on like some. And I was like, all right. So then I did another one. But the one I had, that shit crazy. And even Mike was like, bro, they wildin'. They should have used that shit. They'll tell you. It's called ancient history, but that's like that's probably gonna come out and I don't even know when, but hopefully it'll happen, you know. Yeah, I mean, on that New York note, like maybe I'm wrong, but something that really stuck out to me about 14K is I feel like it's this really New York record. I feel like it's maybe your most like lyrically just like hyper local New York references record since No Mountains in Manhattan. Um, and like for that one, you know, that was like your first big full length introduction to the world. It makes sense. You want to kind of show people where you come from, but tell me what, what brought you back there all these years later, you know, rapping about bacon, egg and cheeses again. And like all that kind of, you know, it's like, it's, it's so like, you feel like you're overhearing a conversation on the street, New York or something. When you listen to that record. That's interesting. You say that because I didn't really realize that. I don't think, I think No Mountains for sure. I was like, this got to be New York as hell. Like, this is my first record. Like, da, da, da. Maybe it's just working with Tony or just being with Tony. He's from New York. We go back. I think also he was a big part of the sound of No Mountains too, Tony. So maybe that just kind of brought me back to that. I mean, I think, I feel that. That's hard. I didn't really realize that. But it's cool because the sound of it is kind of like, the sound of the record is crazy, like, different. So I'm like, maybe that too. Maybe, like, since it was so next, I was, like, trying to ground it back into, like, some hard New York shit or something. I don't really know, but that's that's interesting you say that. I'm going to go back and listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, it could be, like, maybe this one just had certain lines that really jumped out at me. But I was like, oh, it's, like, so much like, really local stuff on this one. That's hard. So, you know, you were talking about like doing all these projects with so single producers. Um, tell me what you like about doing a whole project with one producer. Well, I think at first I was just like, I don't know. I was in like a weird place creatively and everything. And I just didn't want to, 
I don't know. I didn't want to like overthink anything at the time. So then, so I was kind of like, I don't know. It started with Nah. When Nah, like he was like, we've been wanting to do a record, and then we had, we had a, pan, we were it was in the middle of pandemic, so we were like, fuck it, we got nothing else to do. So then we kind of did that, and then the Navy thing was like. It did happen organically, and then it kind of at first, because then the Navy thing was like, we did a couple records, and then I was like, yo, we got to do a whole... He was saying at first, he was like, we got to do the whole album, and then like once I had like three joints with him, I was like, yo, nah, we got to do the full... Like, this is just a certain world, like, in a certain... Like, it, it's got to stay in this world, you know what I mean? So, uh, that's kind of them from... And then I was really happy with Half God. That's like, to me, that was like, one of the projects where it like came out at the right time where I felt it and I was still like into it. And it was like, I was feeling good about, you know what I mean? I was in a healthy place. Like, so I felt really good about that record. And then at that point I was on tour with subject and then I'm like, yo, we got to do the tape. Cause we was just making mad shit and he was making mad beats for me. And we had a bunch of joints I was sitting on already with him. So and then I had the idea, I was like, we got to do like a mixtape. It was just that. It was like being creative and just linking up with your friends. I mean, like, let's do something. That's kind of what it was, I feel like. Because then at the same time, I was working with Tony the whole time. Like, literally since the end of Half God, I started working on this record. But we would just meet up like every week. And then if he couldn't meet up, whatever, next week. And just do a joint or a couple of joints. So it really was that. It was just, yeah, like meeting. I was just like, all right. Versus making this whole, like, this is the next Wiki album. Like, what, I'm going to do all, like, get two, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, let me just zone in and focus on with different people. And then by doing that, each project can kind of be its own world and have its own sound and, you know, bring something else out of me. And then that's kind of where I was left off at the stage where I'm at now, where I'm like, what's next, you know, which is, I'm excited for it's kind of cool to see like how many people are bringing this back. Cause I feel like like late eighties, early nineties, like the single rapper, single producer combo was so common. And then I feel like, I don't know, maybe like Illmatic might be the turning point where people were like, Oh, we can do like a bunch of producers. And I feel like everybody did that for like 25 years. And we're seeing a little more of like the single producer coming back. And I feel like it's like, even that, like people started, once you get to, like loose with that and you're just like like I don't, I don't know like that's the thing Illmatic is a perfect example because it's like all these producers but they all came together it's like that's what makes it it's like it's, it's not as easy as it as it seems you know what I mean it, it's not as easy as just being like yo let me get like send me all these beats it's like they were all coming together to be like yo we gotta make Nas have the best album because he's like the chosen one right now you know what I mean like that's how I feel so it's like even if that, when I want to work with more people, I want to, not that everyone got to be, but like, I want to have that kind of group mentality of like, we're creating this record versus like, just me picking beats from different people and, and then being like, all right, yo, look, I got all these different, it's like, it's like when people get like a feature on every song and it's like, bro, like, you just like overdid it with the feet. You know what I mean? When it's like, it's like, all right, I get it. You're trying to like hit every different lane, but it's just like, doesn't seem cohesive anymore. You know what I mean? Like. You know what I'm talking about? One of them albums that it's just like stacked. It's like the game album or something. It's just like stacked with, I get it. But like, it's so much better when it's like, there's those few features that are like, oh shit, like that one hits. Like, you know? Oh yeah. It's like 25 songs with like 26 guests. <laughs> yeah. It depends. I like the West Side Gun shit because to me, West Side Gun is like a curator. You know what I mean? As well as the MC. So it's like with that, I get it. It's almost like, some DJ Khaled in the street of like on some underground shit, but hard. You get what I mean? But you get what I mean? Just like I'm curating this whole thing, but I'm also rapping. But I think it can it can make sense. You get what I mean? But it's like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it can seem forced. That's all I'm saying. Totally. Yeah. And it's cool when it feels cohesive and it feels like the artist is really taking the project as like one full piece and not just like 20 chances to get a song on Rap Caviar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so let me talk, let's talk a little bit about some of these producers. So Na is like, for me, that was such a world collide moment. Cause I remember when Mike was doing that band 1994 and when you were doing Rat King, if you would have told me at that point, like one of the guys from Rat King and the drummer of 94 are going to make a rap record together in 10 years, I would have been like, 
I don't know him. <laughs> like, <so laughs> That's that was like, that was cool. And that happened. Like, how did you yeah. guys connect? Well, we've been, we, I was playing show. Rat King was playing shows with Nah like since a what like a long time back, you know? So the, it was kind of like an early connect where we always stayed in contact and like we would do shows once in a while together. And then we always wanted to work. He worked on some of the records too and shit. Um, he was on Ufi, I'm pretty sure, and like, yeah, he was on Ufi and No Mountains, but yeah, like it's something we. But you know what? What he did for Ufi and No Mountains, he was like adding sound on top, versus like we didn't really get a chance to work properly, just me and him. So I think that, and it's the same thing. He's got all these different projects he's working on, and he's got a million things going on. I got a million things going on. It's hard to like just link up with one person. The pandemic really gave us that opportunity just because we didn't have anything else going on. And, and so it's like, all right, let's just do this. And it was cool because he, he would just send me the joints and it would be like, that's the joint. And then I would just write to it. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't much like, like it was kind of me giving him my bars and he created the record. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like. That's cool. Yeah. I also want to talk about the subject. He, him and I feel like his like the guys he works with a lot like Papo like it's so interesting because I feel like he's got this kind of early 2000s like just blaze Swiss beats thing going on and it was like cool to see you bring your flavor to like what he does like what um what attracted you to his music what do you like about what he's doing right now with that kind of early 2000s like revival vibe subjects the truth bro that's the thing subject could do anything that's like that's like the they're 2004 so that's their like bedrock but at the same time just like it'd be like you in a it'd be like all oh, the 90s that's like the bedrock of my shit their shit is 04 so but they're bro like subjects a student of the game like he can he's he he know all like he he's i look to him about like all the old school shit like he knows everything so and anything he doesn't know he's seeking out you know what i mean and he know he grew up in the like fucking hardcore and metal and all that shit so he he's tapped in he's he, he's got an ear for everything and um i just think he he's like a great talent and got like the potential to be the, like one of the best you know what i mean so and he's just like if you one of the greatest dudes as well and like ill is dj too so yeah man subject it all happened naturally it was like we all you know we all met probably a couple like three four years ago and ever since then, we've just been gang. Lucas, Papo, me, Reed, Hunter, you know what I mean? Uh, SRH, all that shit. Like, so it's been dope. Yeah, Subject, I, I got new stuff with Subject, too, we're working on. He got heat. But I love that, too. I love that, too, because that, that's the thing. People don't realize that shit is hard. That's when, like, people were actually getting experimental as fuck. And people, you could look back and you could be like, whoa, this age mad weird, but like, it should be hard. That's what I thought was cool about it. Like, I feel like we've seen like so much love for like the early mid nineties. Like that's obviously an important era. So for him to come out and be like, the early two thousands was awesome too. Like, exactly. It was, that's it's what's like, dope. It's, about, it's about time to, yeah. Exactly. I fuck with it. Cause it's like, it's going, you know what I mean? It's also just. It's like honest, you know what I mean? It's like real to them. It's like this is what you know, it's like a lot of the times, even like me on some like, oh, I love the nineties shit. Like I grew up in the two thousands, bro. You get what I mean? Like like I grew up off dipset. Like, you know what I mean? So I loved I went back and I loved and I also grew up on that, but not like it's like the culture I was in was the two thousands. So it's like it's like to and you know what's interesting is that sport Sporting life was very on that too early. He was on the like, all his shit was like, yo, it was like volume two. You know what I mean? Like, hold, like, he was always trying to make those type beats. Sport, like, he was mad into like, yo, the early 2000s shit where it was like getting weird as fuck and experimental kind of. But they was like making bops, but it was like weird joints. You know what I mean? Like, even that song, like, you know that song, Come and Get Me by Jay Z? It's like that song. It's like hella weird listening to that song. But it's fire, you know what I mean? But it's like different. For sure. And like, I mean, I, you know, I'm like, we're like about the same age. I like, I had like, you know, 
like I heard H to the Izzo before I heard Reasonable Doubt. You know, I heard yes. like um, Drop It Like It's Hot before I heard Doggy Style. You know what I mean? Like it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. Like that stuff is formative, I think, for a lot of like people in their 30s and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, so speaking of, let's go back in time a little bit. So, you know, you've been rapping for over a decade now, but um, tell me about like the early years. Like what were some rap records or experiences with rap music early on? That made you realize this is something you want to do. I'm trying to think, like, not to sound cliche, but like, for me, it was really like the earliest ones was like, like I loved like Get Rich or Die Trying and shit when I was young. But the shit that really made me fall in love with it was like Ready to Die and like Thirty Six Chambers, like dumb dumb joints, and like, you know what I mean, like. Those are the ones that ready to die. That was my record, bro. And that shit still is. I listen to that front to back and Biggie the Truth, bro. Like not to sound cliche, like Biggie the Truth. Like that album is crazy. So that to me, just because he told the story, it's like a movie. You know what I mean? Like that shit was like a movie. So that was definitely something. And then from there, I just dug. Then I went into anything I could listen to. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, so many different stuff. Like, I was just going back to. I like going back and listening to old shit I haven't listened to in a minute. Like, uh, Muddy Waters by Redman. Like that record. That shit is crazy. No skips. And I remember being mad into that when I was younger too. But there's so much influence because then it's also Dipset was the era I came in. So, oh, anything, anything Dipset. Cameron was my favorite rapper for hella long. Like, uh. Black on both sides. Most Def is one of my biggest influences. Most Def. I'm like a mix of Most Def and Cameron, I think. Like, Most, to me, is like, I don't know. It's another level. His, his you know, his his ability to, to, like, be more than a rapper, but at the same time, never sacrifice being an MC, you know? So tell me about when you first started rapping, like, did you, did you start with playing shows? Did you start with like putting tracks up on the internet and then you got shows from there? No, I started just rapping by just in the ciphers, just going to parties, going around the city, meeting up with people, just rapping, like mostly at parties, like functions or like, you know what I mean? Like, at any function in the city, it could be just the little shitty ones with my friends, but it also there would be like these parties that were like huge warehouse parties, you know, and like everyone in every kid in the city was out, every school was out, it's like mad kids out. It would be like the train home would be a fucking filled, like the whole train, every car packed with kids drinking, smoking, like the whole shit. So at those parties. You know, like, people would be mute, dancing and all that, but I would just be in the stairwell or whatever, like, in the cypher. Like, every there's always a cypher. And I was just that kid that was, like, little as fuck, but it didn't, know, it didn't matter how big or tough anyone was. I was rapping my ass off, like, and I would rap louder than everyone, and, and I would just, you know what I mean? So I, I made a presence amongst just the world of the of just like new york downtown brooklyn kids you know what i'm saying type shit so that was really how i got into it and i knew from the jump when i was doing i knew that's what i wanted to do you know what i mean but that's just what i that's what it was and then just freestyling on beats and shit and then uh writing all the time writing all the time you know what i mean and then I, when I met Sporting Life is when, like, I was like, all right, let me make, like, a record. But even before that, what I would do is I would just I would just rap on beats and put them on YouTube and shit and Facebook, you know? Like, I got uh, these two. It's Wiki New Written. Wiki New Written 1 and Wiki New Written 2. I think one of them got deleted off, but you could go look back. It's me hella young rapping. But, uh... Yeah, and then once I met Sport, we started working on. First, we were working on Rat King, but then we broke up for uh, broke off for a little bit. I was still in high school and shit. And then when I was a senior or a junior, I think 
or a senior, I forget. I was like, yo, I think it was when I was a junior. I was like, yo, we got to tap back in because I got all these bars. I wrote all these bars. And then that was kind of Wiki. That was like Wiki 93. So then we did Wiki 93. And then we started building Rat King back up, which was our initial idea. But I was like, I need to get this off right quick, this Wiki 93 shit. So then it was a weird time because at first everyone was like, oh, Wiki is Wiki. And then we went Rat King. And then Rat King was the shit. And it's still, I still get that, like, oh, I miss Rat King, da da da, da which I love, but I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, but Rat King was an era, you know, for especially if you were there. It's one of them things, like, if you were there in New York at that time, you know. And you were at the right age, like, you know, you know what I mean? So, and I'm just happy with that. And I'm happy that, I'm low key happy it didn't turn into some, like, extra shit. It's some, it's that's some, like, for the subtle, the subtle history, you know what I mean? Those like bands that are like, you don't even know about this band that influenced mad shit. You know what I mean? You know the ones? It's like mm-hmm. the one that did, you know what I mean? Just the one on the low key that's like, bro, it's it's impact, you know? So when was the first time you got on stage? I mean, I've been, I was on stage at like, I definitely did like a talent show in my school or some shit, you know? But for real on stage like that, I did a, I remember I did like a couple park jams. Uh, the OG, my old homie Aaron used to set up just like community events and shit. And he had a few park jams and he just had me come out and rap. So that was like the first couple of times. And I remember just rapping my ass off, but losing my breath crazy. And then being like, yo, I got to learn how to do this shit right when I'm on a stage and I'm all excited. And that's something I probably, I mean, I've been rapping forever. So that's something like, I pride myself on too, just the breath control and just being able to be a live MC. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, take shots, but I feel like I see more than ever post COVID so many people with like really prominent backing vocal tracks. And it's like, you know, to me, it's exciting when you can see someone who's got breath control, who they're really performing for you and not relying on something they made in the studio. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel that totally. That shit takes, like, the magic out of it. And when you can... And, you know, it's this thing where it's like, yo, bro, no one ever used to do that at all. Like, not not at all. You know what I mean? So it's like, once things become easier and with technology, you're like, this is unfeasible to do. It's like, nah, people did this. Like, And once you do it and you master it, it's like, that shit's incredible. That'll fuck people up. Fuck people's heads up when they hear someone like... And they're like, it doesn't have to be like the record, but, like, you know, just like at that level, even if it's different, just like, whoa, this is like a, wow, this, you know what I mean? Like, even when I'm out, there, when I'm watching live sets and I hear that, I'm like, whoa. Like, I, I seen um the Fugees play and Lauren Hill play before, obviously, and then she came out with the Fugees, but she did Miseducation. Like, she'd be doing it, she'd be like flipping her flows and flipping the way she hits words. It makes it almost like hard to sing along, but it's dope. I'm like, yo, she's killing it. She's performing, like, for real, you know? Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's, I can think of so many times where I've just, like, seen somebody just go for, like, minutes straight, and you, and everyone is just standing there, like, jaw dropped, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so outside of the members of Rat King, who were some other rappers or producers that maybe took you under their wing early on? You know, maybe, like, let you guest on a track that really boosted you or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think... The show, uh, for me, like producers, Tony, I've been working with Tony for a minute. Um, Lil Ugly Man, that's my people. Um, Lucas, DJ Lucas always be like, when I'm going through a slump, he'll hit me up and be like, we got to work on some shit. We got to do something, da 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 And he'll like get me creative again. So definitely Lucas, um, Sage, someone who always has my back. And, it, you know, it's people like to have my back personally as well as in music. You know what I mean? And um, In terms of rappers, like, I think Earl is someone like when, when I did, I think, AM. Or just him bringing us on tour, just connecting. Like, that was something that was I was hyped for. And it was just, like, definitely helped us out. You know what I mean? Um, Skepta, we did it. Like, but these are all friends. That's the thing. It's all, bro personal shit not like personal shit i don't mean like that like i mean like like me and skepta a lot of people like they look back they're like oh my god skepta how did this happen 
I'm like, bro, me and Skepta were just homies, bro. Like, we met, we rapped together, and then we became t- homies. That's it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just before it was so crazy. You know what I mean? But uh, it's all real natural and organic. Um, I think I say that too much. I need to stop. I need to delete that from <laughs> natural and organic. Shut the fuck up. My bad. Uh, yeah. Who else, man? Ben on me. <laughs> Who else? Who who is like people? I think that's good, right? Scott, Earl, Rem, Remy Banks, my man Remy Banks, always got my back, and always down to like you know he's someone who. I remember we were like, we we're in the studio with Black Noise, and he's like, playing some beat, and I'm writing to it, and <clears throat> Remy's like, "Yo, nah, son, turn this shit off." He's like, "Play that horns joint." And it was living with my mom. He's like, Wiki needs that horns joint. He's like, Wiki needs that horns joint. I'm like, and it he played the beat. It's like a Wiki type beat, you know. Dan, dan, dan. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh shit, this shit's hard. And then I wrote living with my mom. So I was like, I, I always tell Remy, I'm like, bro, you gotta be an A and R too, like because you got the ear. You know what I mean? You, you you made the little connections. I mean, that song was like when that dropped. That was like a serious moment i feel like i like that i was like oh like like i whatever you were doing before that i feel like you really like that song was like a leveling up moment oh i felt that when i recorded it i liked it i was like this is a bop <laughs> i was like i remember like playing it od um i felt that a bit about the am radio verse too like i was like eh, like you know like i like wiki i like rat king and that verse came on the first time i heard that album and i was like wiki is like going in on this verse yeah, that's it, Elwin. I I I fuck with that song heavy, and you know we still get to play it live a lot. So I I know like I'm like oh people like this song, like this is a good one. I'm happy I got like a good like a, you know like a impressionable song that like that like made an impact in some way, you know. For sure. Cause it's cause yeah that one's special. I love that joint, and just even it's an honor to be on that project too. Yeah, I I love that project. That's like that's one of my favorite Earl records. So going back to No Mountains in Manhattan, that came out on XL, and you've been independent since then. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Like, was it just a one album deal in the first place, or did you kind of do the label thing and realize like I think I'd rather be on my own? Yeah, I think it was it was kind of it wasn't no one. It was like there was options and shit. It was more that uh, I didn't feel. Like, all right, the people that signed me, the person that signed me wasn't there anymore. So I just didn't feel like there was anyone, not that no one was in my corner, but there wasn't like a specific person that was like fully, full force believing in it. I felt like I was just a little bit coasting, you know what I mean? And I was like, you know what, if I'm going to put everything into it, I should just, I should put everything into it and and own it and like at least try to do it myself. In the meantime, like, I, I don't know. I I got a long future ahead of me, so we'll see what happens. But it just at that moment, I was like, "Nah, I gotta go do my own thing." And, and you know, even that, I gotta learn this business for myself too, so I can in the future when I work with people, I can know what it is and know what what all of this means. And and you know what I mean? Not get not that I got screwed over or nothing, just like really know when it's right and and. Also know the business, know like what all that means, know what, what like all the percentages and the points on everything and like how that actually impacts your future and all that. But then being realistic with it, you know, a lot of people be like, never sign anything. It's like, bro, not everyone has the, not everyone has the like uh, a whole team, like, you know what I mean? Like not everyone has it to, to be able to do it all on their own. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you need to have have a certain structure and everything in place to even be able to do a lot of this shit. Being independent, do you feel like there is more freedom or less pressure than being on a label? Um, I think there's more freedom. I wouldn't say less pressure. I think in a way there's more pressure because it's like, all right, that's the whole thing. You get an advance. You're like, I right, bet I got it. Now I can, whatever happens, like the record pays it off or it doesn't, whatever. But 
on your own, it's like you really got to, everything you're putting into it, you're trying to make it back. And it's like up to you to to do it all. You know what I mean? I mean, I get you, there's the pressure of like, in the past, I've been like almost, I'm like, damn, like I'm signed to this thing. Like I need to do well so that like, but it's like at the end of the day, like, fuck it, we're artists, bro. Like if they're putting up money and they believe in something, it's like, all right, you believe in the art and you want to like figure out how to sell it and monetize it. That's cool. I'm all about that. But I'm an artist at the end of the day. So, you know what I mean? It, it, shit could take fucking 10 years for people to realize if it's hot. Like, it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I'm I'm just not that I don't care, but it's like I I can't lose focus of that. You know what I mean? I can't lose focus of that. So that's what I mean. It's like the pressure is it's like sometimes it's like all right, if you have a label, you have all the structure, I could just be making music and being like, Oh, I could even be like, Oh, what songs y'all think? Y'all pick the songs. It's like I gotta pick the songs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That shit's actually kind of hype. Like, that's the thing. It would be dope to have, like, not a label, but even someone or someone you help OD trust that you're like, you you know, even I was hearing um some shit on Instagram. It's like off, Offset talking about how, like, he was like, I don't like Rick. I didn't like Rick Flair or some shit, but he was like, I guess, I don't know, Metro Boom and maybe picked all the songs for the album. But I was like, that's ill. He was like, yeah, he picks all the songs. He knows. I trust him. He's like, I didn't even know it was going to be on album. Like, you know what I mean? But I like that idea of like, it's not like just the label. It's like this dude he trusts, like, yo. Because it's also important to take yourself out. You're not the, you don't, not everyone knows everything. You know what I mean? It's good to put, you know what I mean? It's good to, uh, what's the fucking word? Delegate. Delegate. And uh, delegate. And like, you know, that takes a good leader, I think. It's like. You could be a good leader and, and you ain't got to do shit if you pick all the right people around you. Not like you don't have to do shit, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like you're so in it when it's your own art. Like sometimes it takes somebody else being like, this is going to be the hit. You know, you don't exactly. know. Like it's like you have your favorite songs that you wrote, but someone's like, trust me, people are going to like this one. And exactly. So you've been doing this for over 10 years at this point, but you're still like a relatively young person. Do you, do you feel like a veteran or do you still feel like. Oh, fuck with that. Relatively <laughs> young person. I, like that. I mean, you know, like. You can't feel like you're young. Now, man. <laughs> I'm 30, but you're relatively young. No, no, that's how, no, I mean. My bad. What, what was the exact question? I'm sorry. Yeah, for someone who's been doing this for like, you know, 12, 13 years or something like. So my question is just, do, do you feel like a veteran? Or do you still feel like an up and coming artist or somewhere in the middle? I feel somewhere in the middle. But I feel, yeah, I'm not veteran status, bro, because I'm too young to be veteran status. Like, and I haven't, but I'm, but, but I'm making my impact. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've made it, I've made impact. This is what I think. I think that, like, I'm happy with what I've done. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not satisfied. And I, and I feel like right now I'm up uh, up and coming artist. You know what I mean? Today, right now. Mhm. 2024, that's like my first year right there. All this shit before is like that was like that was me. That was like all the pre just like come up shit the past 10 years this is the like the real new come up my new chapter you know what i mean that's how i feel like delete it all not delete it all but like not delete it all obviously don't delete it all i'm saying like i'm excited to just make what's next you know what i mean and i don't want it to be like i don't need it to be compared to anything i'm just trying to grow as like an artist and and Right, like I've been mad inspired again writing, so I, I'm just excited for what's to come, you know. Yeah, no, and it's I mean it's a great place to be because like I'm sure we can both think of artists who can't say that ten years in, you know, or or couldn't say that when they were ten years in. So I think it's uh to still be moving forward, to still be like you said, not satisfied yet. I think that's it's like you know it's a really good position. To be. Mm -hmm. And it's not even that. It's not even I'm not sad. It's more. It's just I'm not satisfied in terms of like. Like I have more, I have more, I have more to say. I got more to to make, and and I want to push that 
whether it's the sound or the concepts or the the message or the all everything, all that. You know what I mean? So it's a cha- it's it's a challenge to myself. I'm trying to challenge myself, you know what I mean? So I know everybody asks this kind of stuff, but I gotta throw it out there. Who's your top five rappers right now? Top five right now? You mean now in terms of like 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 active, like act like people doing it right now. So you can't be dead. Um I'm gonna say because you said active. So like the locks counts, right? <laughs> no, that's are they active though. Yeah, they what are you talking about? They mad active. Like you listen to their new shit. Uh, their new freestyles. I would say like the rappers you like. All right. Popo two thousand four. Um, who else? Mike. Mike. Um, Earl. Earl. Earl Sweatshirt. Who else? Um, DJ Lucas. Um, I need to say someone that I don't know to. <laughs> um. I know what. What do I be listening to? That's like no. I don't fucking know the fifth. The fifth, that's a crucial one. The fifth is uh. Who be really doing that thing? Kai. Oh, a Kai solo. Boom. Neonte too. I fuck with Neonte, bro. Oh, yeah. That shit hard as fuck. Navy blue. All the homies, bro. I put on for the fan, man. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, though. Your old Drew. Zalupas. Main, like, one of the best. Rock Marciano. There you go. That's someone that I don't like. That's not like my per. Like, I met him, but it's not like my. Rock Marcy's like. Come on, son. Like this. It's like perfect. It's just like, come on, bro. Rock Boldy. Boldy, one of my favorites. Just like the Boldy you can listen to a million times and you're still hearing new shit. Um, so yeah, man. Definitely like also I like some like uh I'm trying to think about who else. Low key, my boy Slicky Boy put me under this dude Big X the plug. This shit kinda hard. You know that dude? Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. See, I'm out the loop. You could tell I'm out the fucking loop, Ski, bro. I'm I'm 30 and I need more young heads because I need to learn. But you know what I mean? I've been listening to old shit a lot. Like I've been listening like I was telling you, I was listening to the fucking Muddy Waters and and when I mean Muddy Waters, the album. Respect to Muddy Waters. O G O D respect to Muddy Waters. When I'm talking about Muddy Waters, the album and, uh, Red Man. I already told him. We talked to him in there. Um, and, I, you know, I've been listening to the Bosses, Boss of All Bosses, Volume 2, Vado and Cam. See, Vado, people don't know. Vado, hella regional. Vado was the fucking truth. When he was first coming up, like, he was the, like, oh, this is the next guy, bro. Who else do you think's like like, an underrated, like, you know, maybe 90s, early 2000s New York rapper who doesn't get their flowers enough. Oh, I got you right now, bro. Um, who, who doesn't get their flowers enough? Nature. Definitely doesn't get his flowers enough. Nature. Even AZ doesn't get his flowers. But he gets his flowers, but it should be more flowers. Um, g Depp. G Depp needs more flowers. Um, even Shine needs more flowers, bro. But I'll I'll say that number two is Nature and G Depp. I be telling people, I'm like, bro, you want to be good at rapping? Listen and listen to Nature. Listen to Nature, and you'll be good at rapping. Just listen to that shit, and you'll be good. I mean, you gotta be good. You gotta have rhythm and shit. But I'm saying it's like, bro, he's he's. In, insanely nice so uh just check out for beginner listeners is what is it called for all seasons or is a man of all seasons or for all seasons what is it 
that album is crazy. And then G Depp, bro, Child of the Ghetto, that album. Well, on that note, uh, anything else you want to add or plug before we go? Um, when is this dropping? Uh, probably in the next couple weeks. I right, uh, 14K Figaro out now. Faith is a Rock out now. Shout out Tony Salsa. Shout out Alchemist. Shout out Big Mike. That's it. All right. Thanks so much, Ricky. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks again to Wiki. Thanks so much for listening. Go check out Wiki's two new records out now, 14K Figaro with Tony Seltzer and Faith is a Rock with Mike and the Alchemist. And if you like what you heard in this episode, give us a good rating, subscribe, tell your friends about us. All those little things go a long way and we really, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you next time.